what everybody is, Father's Day. Amen. <laughs> Come on, I need you to get excited. I need you to get excited. Listen, listen, I don't want to leave anybody out. There's a brother sitting outside right now. Coach Ricky let him in. I want to make sure that all the fathers are hearing me right now. I believe that God is going to change the world for fathers. Because you're a good father, a great father, whatever father you are, it does not matter to me. God knows your heart. God knows what's going on with you. I'm just, I'm just so, I'm just so happy to be a part of such a group of men at Light of Life Church. And those of you who are watching me, Light of Life Nation, I want you to just, just honor fathers today. Just honor fathers today. Whatever you do, the man, I'm telling you now, the man. Man, he's fighting to do everything he can to be a, a, a good father, a good husband. He's fighting everything he can to keep his bills paid, his health, his waistline. If you like me, you're trying to keep your waistline down. You're trying to be healthy. You're trying to eat right. Do I have, I ain't here no amens on brothers eating right, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Brothers, you know, brothers like to eat. So, so ladies, whatever you do today, call them up and say, Dad, thank you. But then there's a group of ladies, there's a group of fathers. Maybe there's someone sitting here today whose father who's made that transition. I know I have several daughters in the ministry right now whose, whose fathers has passed away. And my heart and my prayers go out to you that you will have the peace that passes all understanding that God, only God can give you. I don't know what, I don't know how it feels because my father's alive. So I don't know how you feel, but I, I, I'm praying for you and I love you. And as I said to you many, many times before, lean on me. Lean on me if there's anything that I can do or any of the men in our ministry that can help. We're here for you. Special shout out to my biological father, Carnell David Lewis. I don't know. He, he just told me the other day he turned 77 years old. He may watch it. He may not. <laughs> Watch this, but watch this. Ephesians 5 says, honor your father and mother, not your mother and father. Yeah. Honor your father and your mother Amen. in that order. Amen. So Amen. I honor my father, my biological father. But then, but then there's another special man to me. His name is Dr. R. A. Vernon. I just talked to him this morning. He's already, my wife is texting him. I've already called him. I want to honor my spiritual father. Matter of fact, he's seven years younger than me, but I still call him dad. See, don't tell me who you're over until you tell me who you're under. Amen. See, any, any, man, any man that will not submit to authority is already walking on a rocky road. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't hear me. I don't yeah. feel like preaching that already. Somebody has to hold me accountable, and that man is Dr. Ari Vernon. His spiritual father is Bishop Joey Johnson from the House of the Lord in Akron, who is also my spiritual grandpa, 45 years in ministry right now. So I honor the men in my life. But I also want to honor the men who are sitting here right now. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. change the life of somebody in this ministry today. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure. Somebody say pleasure. Pleasure. To have children who are wise. Let, let, let me help you again because Proverbs, Proverbs, the, the wisest, the wisest brother who ever lived, King Solomon, he says, he says, the father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. If you could just bear with me for about 20 minutes today, put the clock on about 20 minutes today. I want to talk to you from my sermon subject title, Black Fathers Matter. 
Amen. Black fathers matter. Amen. Wise and eternal God in heaven, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today, God. What an awesome and mighty and wonderful God you are, worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. God, remove me right now and let your Holy Spirit shine. Shine, shine on me, God. It is in Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the Lord's house. Gentlemen, as a black father in America, you have to live by faith and search for truth. Amen. Amen. You didn't, you didn't hear me. It's hard out here, man. It's hard out here for a player because, listen, I got all of these brothers around me right now. Some, some, some have been fathers for a long time. Some have been fathers for just a short while. Whatever kind of father you are, just know that God has your back. Not, come on, you're not going to talk back to me then? Not only does God have your back, I have your back, and every man in here right now has to hold each other accountable, accountable to what we do, what we hear, what we say, what we feel. Feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, it's a trip, man. Every brother I know got his mind on his money, and his money on his mind. And we're trying to do the best that we can. We're trying to do the best that we can with what we got. And we don't want to make the world think, watch this, men don't cry. Men don't hurt. Hallelujah. Men don't suffer. Somebody said the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Somebody, I was hurting right before I came in here this morning. I don't know if somebody ate yesterday or not. But all wow. I do know <laughs> that we can no longer sit and pretend that we are some type of action figure and superhero and that this failing economy that we're dealing with right now is not affecting us in the membrane. Yeah. See, somebody, somebody once told me that they're not worried about what's going on because they have Jesus. And I believe me, I'm all that. I'm all for that. I'm with Jesus to the ticker stop. But what I will tell you, you're still human. And you still got to think about how you're going to provide for your family. How you going to provide for your children. If you're married, how you going to provide for your wife. Come on now, how you going to pay the house note? Hallelujah. Come on. But watch this. There's Solomon, who was once said was the richest. And the Bible says the richest and most wisest brother that will ever live. There's, there will be none more, no other like him. Uh, 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 Bill Gates uh, once said that had uh, more money than 48 countries and 70 was worth 75 billion dollars. Uh, then you got my, my man, my man who who's the progenitor of Amazon said that he's well over a hundred billion dollars. And capacity, why are you talking about this? Because that's say that that's lunch money to solve. Uh -huh. mm. You didn't hear me. I know you bump your neighbor. I wish you could bump your neighbor right now. Say, I, I, I would be eating lunch all day if I had that. <laughs> That's lunch money for Solomon. But I like this brother because in Proverbs 23, Solomon is doing what he does. He's kicking knowledge and he's dropping it like it's hot. Solomon, why saying is filled with truths of our lives and our behaviors and the things that he was saying a thousand, two thousand years ago are relevant to what we're dealing with in life right now, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And over the last 12 weeks or so, man, we've been pegged with a we've been plagued with a pandemic. We've been ravished with racism. We've been toppled with terror. And you're still holding on and being a black father. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. You're still, you still, you, you like the, you like the weevils. You, you may fall, but you get right back up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot I was talking to grown men, not kids. Weevils. Some brother talking about what's a weevil? You like the matrix. You just <laughs> and come right back up yeah, yeah, yeah. because the world, the world is messing with you. The world, the world is a trip, and, and in today's society, brothers, God is calling you and I to walk in the authority that God has called us to do. You can't fall down right now in the middle of the pandemic. We cannot fall down right now because we're watching what's happening on CNN, constantly negative news. You cannot afford to fall right now. Come on. Yeah. 
You are a black father, and if you've been around me for more than five minutes, you know we don't make excuses, we make what? Judgments. Even though we're going through hard times in life right now, we're leaning on the only thing that we got, and it's our faith. We're leaning on the word of God to keep us going. And Solomon has given us our marching orders. Here it is right there, it's on your screen if you're not looking. Here, here it is right here in verse number one. He says, okay, watch this. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully, observe carefully what is before you. There it is, somebody say, whoops, there it is. Whoops, there it is. It's right there in the text, you missed it. It's right there in the text. So the first thing that literally leaps out of the text for me is, you're gonna have to be alert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm -mm. Come on. Mm -mm. You can't afford right now to be off your game, brother. You better do some push ups, some curls, some crunches, and everything you can. Because right now, you're going to have to be alert. Pastor, what are you talking about? You're going to have to be alert who's in your ear. You're going to have to be alert who you're listening to on TV. You're going to have to be alert who you vote for. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. See, I'm keeping a parenthetical right here because. Because I, I, I don't know who I got in the house. I don't know who's watching me, Democratic, Republican, Independent, whatever you are. All I know is you better vote. Amen. Amen. Somebody type real quick, vote. vote. Somebody vote. type at home, vote. vote. Somebody type vote right now. Say you can't afford to vote. Vote. You have to be, you have to be alert. You have to be careful who's in your ear. And the enemy is crafty. You have to pay attention to everything that the enemy is doing. You have to be attention, black fathers, men, fathers, black fathers matter. You have to be attentive of what you're watching on TV. Don't get so caught up in Sports Center and short skirts. Ladies, forgive me, peeping from a parenthetical. Because I'm talking to fathers right now. So get in where you fit in. I love you. But right now, it's Father's Day. Amen. Yeah. And the man will respect you because game no game like spirit no spirit. So these fathers will respect me if I talk to them like they're men. See, I'm often wondering why they took all of the men off sports center and put the women on that cute. Come on. Come on, man. See, y'all ain't gonna say amen because you think wives watch. I know, I know. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna say amen because you know you're walking like you but not a say nothing. <laughs> but you have to be alert because right now you'll watch sports center all day and you forget all about Jesus. Mm. Because you're looking at I ain't gonna call no names because I don't get no lawsuits from ESPN. <laughs> but some of them skirts on ESPN, boy. So somebody said, go ahead and move past <laughs> Pay attention to what your children are watching. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. You have to pay attention to what your kids are watching. You have to pay attention to what they're Googling. You have to pay attention because you know they're not on Facebook now. They, they went from Facebook to Instagram, from Instagram to Snapchat, and now they're on TikTok. Every time we think we got them, they switch, uh, switch uh, social media devices. You have to listen to what they listen to. I know you say you... You, you, you sanctify Kentucky Friday, and you're going to heaven no matter what, but are you listening to what they listen to? Are you dogging them out because they listen to Drake? Somebody says, Drake, somewhat pretty good at some point. <laughs> Drake ain't all bad. He may not be saying, I don't know his, I, I, I can't predict his spiritual construct, but, but, but I'm listening to what they're listening to because I want to know because the Bible says, fathers do not exasperate your children. See, I grew up with my old school player. They said, beat him to the white meat show. <laughs> Come on, you're not, am I the only one here with a show? Him. Boy, boy, I'll knock your teeth out your mouth. You hit one of these kids now, you're going to jail. Bump in there and say, you're going to jail. You hit them kids if you want to. Like, well, I, when I grew up, when I grew up, we used to go, go pick our own switch. Well, that was in 1990, 1919. You can't hit no kid no more talking about you. I'm going to beat you. So the police going to have you click, click. So fathers, you have to pay attention to what your children are doing and don't get caught up. Watch this. Don't get caught up in being too busy that you can't pay attention to them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Don't get too caught up in, in, in trying to, to keep up with the Joneses and, and get rich schemes and trying to keep up with the world and what the world is doing because, because the world will spit you out and chew you up because the world is, will, will do you wrong. And watch this, Solomon says it right here in verse number four in the, in the God's words version. He says, he says, don't worry about yourself. Don't worry about yourself getting, getting, getting rich. Ooh. Come on. Mm. Don't worry yourself out. Don't worry yourself out trying to get rich. Don't wear yourself out. I'm, I'm going to go slow here because I'm talking to somebody right now who's working five jobs and still not making it. Right. Come on. Amen. And, and don't you realize that it's a, a, a trick of the enemy because the attack that you're going through may not be about you. It's about them not, not growing up with you around because you're so busy trying to work five jobs. Okay, Pastor, somebody said, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Mm, don't You're hurt. trying to work five jobs to catch up when all you have to do is tithe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. See, 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 this is the only place in the Bible where God says, test me in this. Yeah. But you would rather work five jobs. You would rather work five jobs. And will a man rob God? How? You're robbing me in tithes and you're doing good when it comes to eating out. Oh, man, you drop $25 on a boxing match and with no problem, pay for you $25. Uh, to some boxes that you know that you don't even really like. And Solomon says, the wisest, richest man, he says, don't wear yourself out getting rich. Watch this. Be smart enough to stop. So not only, not only, not only do do I have to be alert? But secondly, I have to be a better steward. Yeah. Ooh, blessed quietness. Say it again. Say it again. Ooh, I have to be a better steward. See, being a better steward not only relates to your money, but being a better steward relates to how you handle your, your wife and your children. See, see, being a better steward also means that I gotta, I gotta pour into the relationships. Watch this. Don't sacrifice the relationship with God or your family just to gain wealth. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna say that slowly. See, I went to public school too. Don't sacrifice. Don't sacrifice your relationship with God and your family just because you want to work seven jobs. Don't sacrifice the relationship with, watch this, with God and your family because you like to go hit the golf ball every Sunday. I've been there, done that. Had the t-shirt and the hat, and, and the hat. One of my main dudes right here, Reggie, been with me ever since the church started. We used to play golf, Reggie, every Sunday after church. And right now I'm kicking myself five hours on the golf course when my wife and children used to be at home talking about where daddy. And, and you and I, you, I'm going to blame you. I'm going to blame somebody. Blame, <laughs> blame, Reggie. blame Reggie, baby. Blame Reggie, baby. Reggie did. Reggie made me do it. <laughs> five hours on the golf course. And my, little, my wife at home trying to raise my sons and my daughters, and we are playing golf. I, I'm not saying that golf, playing golf is go, you're going to help because you're playing golf, but right now I can't justify five hours doing nothing but praying and, and, and serving the community. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And see, as a matter of fact, Solomon says it's like this in verse number five. He says, in the blink, uh, in the blink of an eye, wealth would disappear, for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Am I talking to black fathers today? Because I've understood that whenever the, when God confirms, the enemy confronts, and when you put the two together, when God is telling you you need to be a better husband, a better father, I didn't come to beat you up today, brother. I came to encourage you because the last thing I want to do is beat you up because the world is doing enough of that. Yeah. But I do know I've been around for a little while. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I've been doing it for 55 years. And I understand that what we have to do to come together as men of God is build on these relationships. Because the greatest wealth you will ever have is a relationship that you have with him and them. Amen. I'm hoping somebody at home is sharing this message. I'm hoping that somebody at home is watching this right now. I'm hoping that some sister right now who's sitting on her couch is sharing this with her baby daddy and forgiving him because although he may not have been the best father, he did the best he could with what he had. Amen. Yeah. 
brothers, y'all sit here for a minute. I'm going to go chase these ladies right now for a minute and just let them know. He may not have been the best father, but were you adding to the stress in his life? Were you telling him, well, you, you, you know, you, know you, you ain't no good in front of his son? I'm coming back, brother. Don't worry. Are you telling little Johnny that, that you ain't going to be no good just like your daddy? So you already setting the seed in his head that he's not going to be no good because of what you mad at him. So now you're taking it out on them. Somebody said, preach, Pastor. Preach, yeah, yeah. Y'all scared. Men in here scared. Y'all should see him. They're scared. They're like, I ain't going to say nothing right now. She may be watching. But I came to tell you this morning that we're going to be all right in the words of the rapper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we's going to be all right Amen. because we're going to build these relationships and we're going to be very careful about how we build these relationships and we're going to get back to the relationship that cares the most and that's the relationship of growing with Jesus Christ and be careful when people try to pull you away from Christ as a matter of fact I love it because verse number 9 says it says watch this it says it says don't don't waste your breath on fools <laughs> Solomon was tripping. Hey, hey, Solomon was a player. He said, Don't waste your breath on fools, for they will despise the wisest advice. Amen. They will despise the wisest advice. They will despise the wisest advice. Well, watch this verse number in chapter number nine. Solomon, I love this dude because in chapter and verse, chapter and verse nine and nine, he says, Watch this. He says, Instruct the wise, and they will get wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. Yes, so that's see that was a shout. That was, you lost your moment. Yeah, shout yeah, right there. Yeah. He says, "Instruct the wise, and they will get wiser. And teach the righteous, and they will get they will learn even more." Mm -hmm. How many of you want to know more? Every time you crack open this word of God, you want to know more and more and more and more. Yeah. Because, and gentlemen, in order for you to do that, you're going to have to associate yourself. With, with people who want to go to another level. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 You're going to have to stop making excuses and make adjustments. You're going to have to stop hanging around with certain people who ain't got nothing. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about Everybody can't be broke. Amen. Why are you hanging around with broke people when you're broke? Amen. That's right. Why you, why you don't want to go to lunch with somebody who's a millionaire and you pay for the lunch and sit up on them like you're a little child and say, whatever, just talk. I don't want to say nothing. Just talk. Mm. Come on. Amen. Amen. I've said this. If you've been around me any, for, for, for eight years, I've said this many, many times. If you're the smartest man in the room, it's time for you to change rooms. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. If you're the smartest man in the room, it's time for you to change rooms. Which leads me to my next point. Pick your friends wisely. Come on. Pick your friends wisely. It was John Maxwell who said, and I quote, the better you are at surrounding yourself with people on high potential, the greater your chances are for success. Amen. 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 End quote. Broke people can't help broke people. Oh, you, you didn't hear what I said. See, broke people can't help broke people. See, that's, just, that's why I always have this, this constant hang up with people in the church saying, why are you giving your money to the church? Why are you going down there and spending your money? Why are you going, why are you giving your check to the whole, why are you giving your whole church? Somebody says, no, I was going to say shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm peeping another parenthetical. Why in the world would you not give back to the one who supplies your every need? Why wouldn't you not support the local church? I'm talking the local church now. I'm not talking about somebody you saw on TV that's, that's sweating on a handkerchief and say, I'm going to send it to you for $10. I'm not talking about that. If that's you, that's cool in the game. Do what you do, you, I do me. Why wouldn't you support the local church, the one who's putting roofs on somebody's house every week? Uh -huh. The one who's feeding police officers. The one who's feeding the nurses. The one who's feeding the The one who's supplying the kindergarten.
kindergartens at Wings Elementary yeah. every month supplying the whole kindergarten class snacks. Hallelujah. And the talented tent maker from Tarsus, the Apostle Paul says himself, when he's talking, when he's kicking and dropping knowledge to the church at Corinth and Corinthians and Corinthians 15, 33 in the B clause, he says, bad, bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have you high five your neighbor right now and say, you hanging out with the wrong dude. Matter of fact, why don't you air high five somebody right now and say, you hanging out with the wrong dude. Excuse me, turn to the other brother on the side and say, you hanging out with the wrong dude. <laughs> Everybody who say that they want to be your friend mm. is not your friend. That's right. Mm. Come on. I remember when I first married my wife. I used to hang out with this brother. I'm not gonna call his name. He probably a good. He's a good brother. He's a good brother. I hung out with him, so he had to be somewhat decent. We, we worked out together, and you know, we was in the cars and all this stuff. I was young back then. Play, play, man. I had, a, I had, I had American Express. Let me tell you, I'll tell you right. I had American Express Gold Card before I met my wife. I had no debt. Listen, I had no debt. Listen, listen. You know how it is when you single. Do I have any single people or any single brothers out here watching? Any single yeah. brothers? Well, you know when you single, it's a trip. Now, Paul was tripping when he said it's a gift to be single, but there's also a gift to be married. So I think Paul was suffering with some type of bi some bipolarism, spiritually or something, because he says a gift to be single and there's a gift to be married. I just know when I was single, Reggie, when I go, everybody go. Yeah. When I put my juice in the refrigerator, I come back, it's mine. Exactly. When, when I get dressed, we all dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not supposed to be touching right now. <laughs> <laughs> put them out, put them out. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? I did all that to make this one point. <clears throat> this brother tells me one day, right after the wedding, true story, America. God is my witness, my uncle Rap used to say. Well, he rest in him. <laughs> a week after I got married to my wife, he said, oh, let me see how long this lasts. Uh, That's a Negro, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about how saved I was back then. 20 years. Yeah. I, I was a little bit saved. Right. Right. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I told, came home and told my wife, she said, he's not your friend. Mm -hmm. If he already thinking that way, he's not your friend. That's right. That's right. That's right. And to this day, I've never spoke to him again. Mm. Huh. I've never spoke to him again. Pastor, you said all I can say what? I'm glad you asked. In order for us to get what we need to get to be, be better men of God, <clears throat> we have to use wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. Amen. 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 It's in the text in verse number 23, 23 and 23. It says right here. It's on your screen on your Lord third if you watch it. He says, get the truth and never sell it. Ooh, that's yeah, man. Get the truth yeah. and never, never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. Amen. Thank you, Solomon. Amen. He says, get the truth. When you find out what the truth is, the truth will set you free. Amen. When you find Amen. out what the truth is about this game called marriage, I know everybody's not married, but I'm happily married. The Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Girl tried to talk to me in the grocery store. I said, you can't afford me. Ooh. Go ahead. Come on. You can't afford me. My wife came home the other day, said, this is the dude in the grocery store trying to hit on. I said, baby, he can't afford you. <laughs> you, look, you. You look cute and everything, but he can't afford you. Because, and, and other than what I'm saying, I'm using good wisdom. I'm good, using good discipline. And I'm using good character. Because what I need you to understand, gentlemen, right here, that, that every man who's sitting here right now, listen, Every man who's watching me right now via Facebook, whether you're watching me on Facebook or YouTube later, I need you to listen right now. You need to be use good wisdom to make good choices. Somebody say good choices. Good, good choices. choices. You need to make the choices that come from the Holy Spirit and not anybody else. Yes. Yeah, yes, you can consult with two or three of your homies. I got major deals on the line right now for our church. I consult with my wife. I consult with my, my pastor, Pastor Anthony Maddox. I consult with Elder Michael Holler. I consult with Michael, Pastor Mark T. Jackson. I consult with Deacon Levy, the people around me that say, Pastor, don't do that. I know your heart, your heart's so big, you won't bless everybody, but you can't give away money that we ain't got. You can't move into something that we can't deal with. We have to look at it, so you have to use the good wisdom and to make the best choices. Discipline, somebody say discipline. Discipline. 
you're going to have to be disciplined to pray when you're tired. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of my best sleep came when I was praying. <laughs> you have to be disciplined to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and pray before yeah. they get up. Yeah. You have to be disciplined to read your Bible every day. Not sometimes. You're going to have to be disciplined in order to get down on your knees and purposely, watch this, and purposely let your children see you on your knees praying. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. See, 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 see. I, I want my children to see me praying more than watching TV. That's right. I want my children to see me praying more than I'm watching the Dallas Cowboys uh -huh. who ain't paying nobody nothing. Come on. Right. Oh, don't, get me, right. don't get me started on the NFL. Negroes police. Mm. Go ahead. Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Slip. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick hasn't played in four years because he did the same thing that his brother did on George Floyd, took a knee. Mm. So you're going to have to use discipline in order to seek God to understand that what he's called men of God to do. We can't get caught up in sports, and there's no man in this room that likes sports more than me and Reggie, I'm sure. But I know when to turn the TV off. That's right. That's right. right. And brothers, always, always, say always. 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 Always use good judgment. Sometimes that's hard to do when you want what you want, especially as men. We always, we want what we want, what we want, because anybody know me that patience is my least favorite fruit of the Spirit. So you know you want what you want, but you still got to use good judgment. In America right now, as America is getting prepared to open up, which they already have, you have to use the wisdom to know, baby, you know what? We're going to wait another week or two before we let everybody out of the house. We're going to have to use discipline to say, you know what? Just because the gym is open, I still may not go yet. And then you're going to have to use a good judgment in order to preach this to your children. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So all of that was my introduction. Let's get down to my sermon. <laughs> Pastor, what do you want us to do? It's simple. As black fathers who matter, our job is to lead our children, our wives, and our family to a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Sir. See, a lot of things could matter, but the only thing that does matter is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. That's right. Oh my God. The, the, the one thing that I know, gentlemen, without a shadow of a doubt, that the relationship that I have with Jesus Christ is the one that's going to help me to get through this pandemic. The relationship that I have with Jesus Christ is going to help me raise my children up and teach them that when they get older, they will not depart from it. The way that we teach our children right now and the way that we treat our wives, for the men in here who are married, the men who are watching me right now, there is nothing, nothing, watch this, I'm about to help somebody, there's no better relationship in the world than Jesus and that girl that I sleep with every night. Amen. Amen. Pastor, what about your children? They don't come before my wife. Oh, no, don't, get, don't let the smooth taste fool you. I'm a husband before I'm a father. Yep. See, 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 when God put her and I together, the two became one. 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 So God honors me because of the way I treat her. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and then obtains favor from the Lord. And he said find favor from them children. They eat too much. They <laughs> <laughs> eat cereal. Oh, yeah, I, I ain't nothing in my life lost so much cereal during the, the pandemic. I thought cereal, I'm seeing cereal I ain't never even see. I thought he stopped making it. But seriously, folks, or should I say, but spiritually, folks, you're going to need the help of the Holy Spirit in order to do this. You're going to need the help of the Holy Spirit in order to walk in this thing called life and know that God still has your back. How good it is when men can come together in fellowship as one. Amen. Pastor, the Holy Spirit, yes, He is real. You 
can't catch him like a football. I, I, I remember y'all when I was a little boy, people used to say, how was church? Oh, no, we caught the whole, you can't catch him. He's not a football. He already did. Right. He's the third hand of the Trinity. Here's what I do know right here, and it's on your screen, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit, say fruit, fruit, in our lives. Love. See, you're going to have to love your children and love them and love them and love them, and they're going to make mistakes, they're going to do dumb stuff. But you have to love them. Somebody say joy. 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 This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, so the world can't take it away. Somebody say peace. Peace. I need the peace that surpasses all understanding. I have to be at peace when everybody else is in chaos. Say patience. Patience. Now say, God work on me on that one. God work on me on that one. But I have to be patient enough when they do dumb stuff, or I have to tell them over and over and over again the same stuff that I told them before. Kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and watch this self-control. I need it all. Because when I have it all, now I'm better and more equipped to lead the ones that I love. The best relationship on earth that God has given me is to lead them to this one thing that we all need right now. And the world needs it more than anything else right now, and that's salvation. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're watching me right now. Maybe you're watching me right now, and I find it amazing. Y'all saints should be praying. Thank you, Minister Rick. I, I thank you, Rick, because I'm amazed that I woke up on, on, on Monday morning, and I missed it. I called back, and there was somebody who said on, on, on a message, I want to be saved. So if I'm talking to you right now, I want you to text your name to me at 571-926-3185. At Nobody going to see that but me, my wife, and our intercessors. If you want to give your life to Christ, maybe there's a man right here who's, who's never even said the prayer of salvation. But if you want to give your life to Christ, just text your name to that number. 571-926-3185. I believe God is calling in this message. Brother, 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 brother. New York, New Jersey, Chicago, L.A. Last week, somebody from Canada was watching. If you want to get saved, just text to that number. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ. The same thing applies to you. Maybe there's somebody right here that want to rededicate their life this morning. It's not just limited to the brothers today. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ or get saved today, all you got to do is text your name to join or rededicate or be a part of what God is doing for us. Because the same God that did it for us will do it for you. Amen. Amen. The number's at the bottom of your screen, 571-926. 3185. I want that to marinate in your spirit as the music plays softly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for those who are asking to get saved today. Thank you, Jesus, for those who are willing right now to submit to you and your will and your way. Come on, brothers. I need you to worship right now. Come on, I want every man to worship right now. Come on, I need you to stand to your feet and worship right now. Can you want to worship right now? Come on, I need every man in here to worship right now. Come on, this is a safe place. I don't want you to act cute or stuck up right now. I want you to worship right now. Come on, where are my worshipers at? 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 Come on, I want you to worship this morning. Come on, I want you to worship this morning.
Jesus Christ is okay with me and it's all right with everybody else in here. And if you came in late today and you didn't get a chance to give an offering today, listen, I want you to give an offering. There's a couple of ways you can give. You can give online at lightoflifechurch.org or you can give through our cash app at dollar sign Light of Life Church or you can text to give. You can text to give at 703-454 5131. If you old school, if you want to write a check, you can make it payable to LOLC or Light of Light Church, and you can drop it in the post office to our PO Box 1234 Haymarket, Virginia 20168. Somebody say, God is good. God is good. And God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Come on, let's work. announcements on the screen. I want to make sure, gentlemen, that you see the, uh, the announcements. This Monday night, I believe Monday night, my wife is not going to be doing that, I don't think. She is going to be doing that, okay? She's not going to be doing that. I don't know the signals, but I do know it's women's Bible study on Monday night. I believe so. I don't know if it's on the screen. I'm saying it, so it shouldn't be on the screen. What I see on the screen is what I'm saying. And, the, and it just, we're going what? Are right, we going back to what? We, we will be back on the six. Okay. That was Reggie's fault. That's Reggie's fault. Blame it on Reggie. So they will not have ladies' Bible study on Monday night. They'll be back on July the sixth. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. This is what I do know right now. To on Tuesday night, my homiletic hero, Dr. William H. Myers, was my professor. Listen, let me tell you about Dr. Myers. If you've never heard of him, don't go to heaven until you read everything he's wrote. Dr. William H. Myers has six degrees. Somebody say six. Six. He has a PhD and a D-man and two master's degree as well as his uh, uh, diploma in theology. You don't want to miss this because I'm having something that says, can we talk? Light of Life Church is presenting a conversation about the racial things that we are going through in church right now. I know the Church of the Brethren, they asked me to do this, and there's, uh, I think, another church in Manassas. How many of you know that white people need to know what we've been dealing with for 400 years? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And somebody said, well, what's the best way for them to learn? I said, listen, because you haven't been listening for 400 years. Amen. So Dr. Myers is probably the best person. Uh, like I said, he's my educational mentor, so he'll be doing that on Monday night. I don't know who else. Maybe get Dr. Vernon on. I don't know. But I do know that. God is good all the time. Don't forget that every single day, set your clocks right now that we pray three times a day. People can say whatever they want to say about this church, but one thing I will know that they will say, that we love on people and we pray. Yeah. Yeah. So we pray three times a day. The first prayer is at 7 a.m., and then we have one at 12 noon, and then we have another one at 6 p.m. So make sure you set your clocks. Your alarms go off for prayer time. Amen. Is God good? Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. God is good all the time. Come on, Jimmy. Go Facebook Live. Would you just stretch your hands toward the screen right now? Those of you who are watching here live, would you just stretch your hand for the benediction? Never walk out on church until you get the blessing to go. The benediction says, wise and eternal God in heaven, Father, we thank you for this hour that we spent with you. God, we come against overeating and speed tickets right now in the name of Jesus. God, don't let no man in here eat more than he can handle today. But as we leave this place, but never from your presence, place an angel of protection around each and every one of us for safe travels and mercies. Until we meet again, it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask. Jesus name. Amen. Amen.